Welcome to Kingdom Huddle. Listen, on this episode, I'm going to be talking about timing. We have all heard the statements that timing is everything, which means that your success or your failure can sometimes be based on timing. So if you're like me and you're a kingdom citizen, you're often wondering, well, when is God's timing versus my timing? Listen, I'm going to break that down for us today. I'm going to share my struggle and my testimony with knowing God's timing versus my timing. If this is something that you're interested in, tune in. You know, timing can be a very tricky thing. I am somebody that I've never played sports, but I do enjoy watching sports. And one of the things that I really enjoy watching is, well, one of the things is the Olympics. And one thing that I noticed in the Olympics, in every sport of the Olympic, from gymnastic to swimming to track and field, which is my favorite, to basketball, soccer, all of it, all of it deals with timing timing. You have to know exactly when to go, what to do. There's a time and a rhythm to everything. And it had me thinking like, well, if there's a timing with sports, if there's a timing with the seasons, God created four seasons. So within a certain time, the season is changing. Well, then there has to be a timing to my life. There has to be a reason why I'm here and there has to be a reason or a timing when I'm supposed to do stuff and when I'm not supposed to do stuff. So you might be asking yourself the same question like, people always say that God is speaking to me and God is saying this and God is saying that, but I don't know. When am I supposed to go? What am I supposed to do? Timing can be so tricky. And I want to share with you what I struggle with in God's timing. This platform. This platform, social media. I just joined social media and it wasn't my idea at all. I do not like social media. At least I didn't like it in the past. But the reason why I just didn't like social media is honestly, I don't quite understand it. I don't understand. I don't understand like what's the purpose of having followers again and what am I doing and what am I supposed to be posting? And many years ago, I was on social media actively for about six months and that's all I could tolerate. And the only social media platform that I was on was Facebook. And I got so annoyed by Facebook because people are posting all kinds of foolishness. I'm like, this is such a waste of time. Why in the world do people want to be involved in this? I don't. I have other things to do, better things to do. But like I said before in my previous video, my first video, when you are on assignment, when you are called to do something, it's not always going to be your idea. And guess what? It may be in a space that you're uncomfortable at and a space that you don't know nothing about. I'm not good on social media. And some of you all may be kind of like ragging me because of these videos like, girl, why you do that? Why aren't you doing this? You should do this. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm learning. The thing about it is I don't know what I'm doing, but I didn't choose to sit on the sideline until I knew everything, until everything was perfect before I move. Because when God speaks, which again, I believe that God is my coach. So when the coach speaks and he says, go, I choose to say, okay, I don't quite know what I'm doing, but let's go. Let's go. I'm sure you're going to show me along the way. Same thing with these videos, same thing with the other um, social media platforms, um, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. God will show me and I am willing to learn along the way. But let me be real with y'all. When God told me through different voices from my family members and friends and, and I felt like he kept saying, okay, it's time to go, 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 pushing me. I felt like this push inside saying that, There's more I'm calling you to, and I want you to do it differently. 
you know, I was just like, okay, that sounds good. You know, maybe about a year or two, give me some time to me kind of research this social media thing. Let me just kind of figure out how to do YouTube videos and I'm doing all this stuff. And God will say, no, 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 now, uh, um, excuse me, uh, right now, now. I struggle with that because like I said, I don't have the knowledge in this field. I'm not an expert. I, at least I don't see myself as an expert. And also, if you all notice, this is not bling in my mouth, y'all. Braces. A grown woman with braces for the first time in my life. I'm in, I am in my 40s. I have three boys and they all have had braces. And finally, my husband was like, honey, I want you to go ahead and do what you desire. You want to go ahead and fix the gaps in your teeth? Go ahead and do that now. I'm like, okay, cool. You know, we're in COVID. We're wearing masks anyways. Nobody will really know. And God is now calling me saying, go on social media and show your face. This timing of God is so uncomfortable for me, y'all. I have to be real. It's so uncomfortable for me because I'm just like, God, I'll do it. But can we just do it in about a year or two years when, you know, I have my braces off and I have my teeth is whitened and, you know, I'm more comfortable and confident. But God said, no, it's not about you, child. It's not about the way you look. I just want you to be a vessel. Because whatever God wants to do in this earth, he has to do it through you and I. He has to do it through you and I. We have to be his hands and his feet. It's uncomfortable. The reason why I was willing to say, God, yes, I'll do it now, is because I understand that delay obedience, me saying I'll do it next year, two years from now, that delay obedience is actually disobedience. Because I'm trying to wait to move in my knowledge, in my comfort, and I'm probably stepping on some toes right now. Because you're waiting and saying, well, when I lose weight, well, when I when I have more money, well, when the kids grow up, well, when I get married, and God is saying, no, 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 now, now, do it now. There's an urgency because there's a lot going on in this world. There's a shifting. I truly believe that COVID has shifted so much stuff and it was on purpose. This is what I believe. It was on purpose because God needed some voices that was misleading the people to be silent, to be silent, that their platform no longer have the power that it used to have. And he now needs voices like who I feel like I'm a nobody, I'm not an expert. He need voices like us to step up and say, you know what, I don't quite know what I'm doing, but God told me to go this way. Oh no, I'm just gonna go this way. For us who have been kingdom citizens for a while, it's easier, I would say, at least it should be easier for us to step out and do it, even if we're uncomfortable, because we've had seasons to grow in our faith. Faith is just pretty much the absolute confidence in the one that's, that you're following. Okay. So we've had moments and different things that came up. It's almost like playing sports, lifting weights. When you first start working out, it's hard, especially lifting weights. I've heard my cousin is a trainer and she's awesome. Her name is Frankie Riley. You should follow her. But um, she is awesome. And when she's training her clients and the clients wants to get stronger, she's not going to give them weights that is like, oh, yeah, I'm working out. Ooh, ooh. No, she's going to give them weights that's going to cause them to just push a little bit, just push a little bit. So for us kingdom citizens that have been in this game for a long time, that we've been following our coach for a long time, when he speaks, we know his voice. We know his voice. And so that because I've trusted you in the past and you actually helped me, develop me, 
And now I feel like I'm more equipped. Maybe I'm more confident in not my ability, but in my ability to listen to you and follow you, then I'm willing to step up and do it. You may not be at that stage, but it doesn't mean that God is not calling you to a higher level. So let's talk about how do you know when it's God's timing versus your timing? There's two simple ways that I know that is when it's God's timing versus my timing. Number one, when it's God's timing, it's going to cause your faith to grow. It's going to cause your faith to grow. So your faith grows when you decide to trust in him. When you have to wait on God. When, when you know that it is not my idea and I don't know how I'm going to do this, but you feel an increase in your trust level with God. Number two, you know that when it's God's timing versus your timing because he gets all the glory. The thing about God that always amazes me when I read the playbook is that he will choose the most unlikely people. And it seems like so many other people are so much more qualified than the individuals that, th that he chose chooses to use. Like for instance, there's this individual in the Bible, his name is Gideon. Gideon described himself pretty much in, in, in lack of a better word, a loser. I'm from a small town, I'm a nobody, I'm the least in my family, nobody really respects me, I'm a scaredy cat. And guess how God greets him when he when he um, first meets him, or at least when we're first introduced to him um, in the story, an angel comes to him and it says, greetings, mighty man of God, mighty warrior, He's like, um, is somebody else? Who oh, oh, is the mighty warrior? But anyways, this individual, when you read the story, you, you see how he transforms because he starts trusting not in his ability. He knows that, listen, I don't have nothing to offer. I don't know what I'm doing. But he goes on to defeat one of the greatest army back then through the strength that God gave him the more that he relied on God the more his confidence grew and the fact of the matter is he was so in awe of the fact that God chose me he wants to use me that he gave God all the glory and that's what God is saying at least that's how I feel in my life I'm like God you want me to do what now and okay all right, well, Lord, I give you all the glory and the honor. And anytime anybody say, oh, you're doing a great job. Oh, oh mm -mm, no, ma'am. No, ma'am. I refuse to take the glory and honor from my coach. And my coach is the one that's developed me and is developing me. My coach is the one that came up the, with the plays. I'm just running it. I'm just somebody who, if you're going to give me credit, give me credit for really knowing how to follow instructions. That's it. I follow instructions well. Don't give me no glory, no honor, because it all belongs to my coach. To my coach. So you know that it's God's timing because it's going to force you to trust in his ability, not yours. You know it's God's timing because all the glory and the honor will go to God because you know it's not my ability. It's not me doing this. I'm shocked just like you all are that he selected me, but I choose to follow him because I trust so, him. I am a football fan. I live in North Carolina, so naturally I am sticking with the home team and that's Carolina Panther. Keep pounding. Okay, y'all, don't come for me. I know that we haven't won any championship yet, but we will. We will guarantee you we will. But I'm a big fan of football, and there's a lot of amazing coaches in football. And one of the coaches that I feel like this man is just amazing, hate him or love him, Bill Belichick, 
is someone who knows how to win a championship. He really knows how to coach and get his players to be able to do what he needs them to do so that they can end the, at the end win the Super Bowl because that's the whole goal of playing football. But I want to quote to you what he stated in an interview he did in, I believe it was about May 2017. So it's not a recent interview, but it's so worth it, especially with the topic that we're talking about timing. And this is what he said, Bill, Bill Belichick. He said that you can be fast, but making the cut at the right time is a little bit more important than being fast. Belichick says, running the route on the right timing is a little bit more important than being tall, big, or fast. He goes on to say that whether it is whether it's being in sports or business, the right decision can be the wrong one if the timing is bad. So a lot of that is incentive, I mean, instinctive. And a lot of that is gained through experience. Timing is important, is an important part of all critical decisions. It's our job as coaches to provide instructions and the right method, Belichick says. He says, we've got to give the team a chance to have a good game plan by coaching good techniques, by setting up drills that will allow the players to improve. Oh my goodness, that was so good to me because so many things that he said can relate to our coach Jesus that he's not looking for the fastest for the strongest all he's looking for are individuals who can take the playbook who can take the instructions the helper who says holy spirit and listen and apply what he's telling us to do because the thing about it is he's in our corner all coaches are in the on the sideline cheering their team on and even yelling out plays to them say no 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 go there no 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 get him watch behind you that's what coaches do and that's what holy spirit does for us if we allow the holy spirit to speak to us if we get in tune with the playbook then we too can be champions too jesus wants us to win in this world but we have to understand, even though we don't understand all the techniques of our coach, all the drills that they put us through, like, do we really have to go through this? Is there another way to get there? You don't have to understand it, but you have to understand that the coach that's leading you, he wants you to win just as bad as you want to win. So it's important. There's something else that he said on in here that he said, we've got to give the team a chance by giving, by having a good game plan. Having a good game plan. We all can have plans for our lives, but I guarantee you the game plan that God has for you. Oh my goodness. If you really lean into that plan, you can't, you can't fail. There's no stopping you. And the thing about it is, it may seem as if, man, everybody is running past me. Everybody is being faster. Everybody is stronger. Everybody is more, more, more than me. But if you stay in your lane, if you understand the play, if you continue to run that play, it will guarantee success. You will get to exactly where you need to be. There were certain times in my life that I felt like, God, this cannot be the game plan for my life for me to be an at-home mom after going to college and thinking that I was going to become this successful woman, independent woman. This cannot be the game plan. All of my friends, they're all going ahead. They're, they're, they have all this money. They're traveling overseas. They're taking vacations. They're doing all these things outwardly that seem like they are ahead of me, God. What is the plan? What is the plan? And the whole time he was saying, you live in the plan. You're in the plan. What you're doing right now is exactly on schedule for your life. Chill out. I got this. I know exactly what you need when you need it. That's what a good coach does. A good coach is not going to give you a bad 
plan, game plan. Why would he do that? His name is on the line just like yours. Just like our coach. His name is on the line. There are certain things that he's going to do, not because you deserve it, but because his name is on the line. He wants to win just as much as you want to win. So if you take away anything from this, God's timing is always on time. It may not seem like it, but God's timing is always on time and the game plan that he has will completely outweigh any plans that you might have. Trust your coach. Trust your coach. Well, we've come to the end of our time together. I hope you enjoy this and I hope that it really helped you to just be encouraged to understand that if you trust the plans that God has for you, you'll get there. Wherever there is, you'll get there. And maybe sometimes you need to adjust your thinking of what there should look like, you know? So anyways, I, I really enjoyed my time with you today and continue to follow Kingdom Huddle. We are just getting started, but we're getting off on a strong foot. We are starting off strong and we are in a season where God says go. It is go season. So this is just the beginning for Kingdom Huddle. Continue to stay connected. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe and hit the notification button so that you won't miss anything. And once again, please, please, please share this with your friends and family member, especially the younger generation. I, my goal is to help shape their mindset. Okay, we need a shift in our mindset and that's the goal of Kingdom Huddle. Thank you for joining. Continue to follow me on my social media handles. Um, you can find me on Facebook as Wilma Parker. You can find me on, I believe it's Instagram at Wilma Parker 797 and then also Twitter Wilma Parker 79. I love you all. And I look forward to seeing you all next time. Tune in, share, like. Take care.